Today's video is sponsored by DuckDuckGo. This is my 1983 Apple Lisa. When most computers had text prompts, this thing had a full graphical user interface. It's also one of Apple's most notorious flops. But today, I want to find out if this thing deserved its fate by trying to actually use it. The Lisa OS is pretty weird, so stay tuned. And if you enjoy rooting for the underdog, 40 years too late, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. When the Lisa came out in January 1983, the current version of MS-DOS was 1.1. Actually, it was still called PC-DOS back then. The Commodore 64 had been on the market for less than a year. In an era when people were still booting to BASIC, the Apple Lisa had a full graphical user interface with a mouse. If a modern, casual computer user went back in time, I dare say the Apple Lisa is the only computer that they'd be able to sit down and use. Of course, being that far ahead of its time came with some quirks, the biggest of which was the price. A base model Apple Lisa cost $10,000. For that price, you could buy a brand new Toyota Corolla, and you'd still have enough money left over for another Toyota Corolla. As the Australians would say, can you believe that nobody bought this thing? When the first Macintosh came out a year later at just 2,500 bucks, the Apple Lisa was doomed, despite it being in some ways a much cooler machine. Well, today we're gonna pretend that we joined Team Lisa in 1983, and we're gonna use this thing for normal computing tasks, and maybe even use a little modern hackery to connect this thing to the internet. Right after this quick word about today's sponsor, DuckDuckGo. Yeah, I almost can't believe it. I've been a DuckDuckGo user and super fan for well over a decade now. Not only are DuckDuckGo the hometown heroes located right here outside of Philadelphia, but they are a force of good for internet privacy, a service that respects the end user and a search engine that works like Google is supposed to work, but it doesn't track you and still provides really good search results. But I'm telling you, you need to try the DuckDuckGo browser. It's fast, secure, private, and it doesn't just not track you. It actively prevents others from trying to. It stops third-party trackers from loading. It strips tracking parameters from links. It works to stop fingerprinting, referrer tracking, and DNS cloaking. Targeted ads are blocked, and local search results are anonymized. Adblock and uBlock don't even do that. It even blocks the really insidious stuff, like Facebook embedded content that can track you, and Google sign-in pop-ups on non-Google sites. I especially love the little fire button that lets you quickly clear your browsing history and cookies. Excellent touch. I have been non-stop evangelizing DuckDuckGo for years. To anybody who would listen, it is so cool that they are sponsoring today's video. I really, truly, earnestly recommend that you give the DuckDuckGo browser a spin. It's totally free, it's available for Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. Link in my description down below. In our last video, we did a lot of work to this thing to get it up and running again and reliable. I built a brand new power supply from Modern Components. We recapped the video board so the video is nice and crisp. And this thing is booting from hard drive images on this ES profile. I'll come up with a better shielding solution at some point. But suffice to say, this thing is fully working and working better than it probably has in years. All right, power this thing on. It's doing its built-in tests. Full one meg of memory is still okay. And it boots up into this image selection software, which allows me to choose which image on the ES profile I'd like to boot. So the one I'm working with is the Lisa OS 3.1 image with no serialization, which means all the apps will work. Now, the thing to remember about Lisa OS is that when it was released, there really weren't any other graphical operating systems like this. The desktop metaphor, drag and drop, files, icons, folders. Apple's engineers were kind of figuring this out as they went. Many of the concepts that we take for granted today started in the Lisa OS. Of course, there are some quirks. For example, the Lisa OS takes the desktop metaphor to an extreme. So if I want to start a document, I don't open Lisa, right? 
I go to this Lisa Wright paper stack, double click it, that tears off a new piece of Lisa Wright stationery. I can name this to whatever I want. And if I double click it, it opens the new document in Lisa Wright. If I want to save and close it, I do save and put away, or I can set it aside where it goes into the desktop here. This philosophy even extends to folders. I have a stack of empty folders here if I want to get a new one out. Double click on the stack. Here's my new folder, Simpsons references. Amazingly, I can even nest folders within folders, which is really advanced for 1983. The Lisa OS is sometimes called the Lisa 7.7 system because there are seven apps written by Apple that make up the core of the office system. The only seven things you're going to need to do to have a productive day in business. But in order to show you, we're going to need to dig up some peripherals. Yep. This is an Apple Image Writer, a lovely dot matrix printer that works over serial and is one of the about five printers that are compatible with the Apple Lisa. And two of them are basically the same. One of them is just this printer with parallel instead of serial. But this printer is quite lovely and makes very wonderful dot matrix noises. It works with both tractor feed paper and friction fit so you can put regular paper in here and especially cool you can still buy cartridges for this on amazon now unfortunately i don't have the db25 serial cable that this thing needs but i do have the parallel cable from an iomega zip drive we can use this in conjunction with a null modem adapter and this should work just fine so I'm going to plug the printer into serial port A. I've got special plans for serial port B. All right, now we need to go into Lisa preferences and tell it that there is an image writer on serial port A. Let's write up a quick test document. Who killed Mr. Burns? Let's give this bold 24 points center. All right, let's spice up this document a little more with some of the Lisa's killer features. We'll tear off some Lisa Draw paper. And when I'm telling you that Lisa Draw is way far ahead of its time, that is an understatement. Look at this real time vector resizing. We can even zoom in and out to view the whole page. And look at this. I can select and drag around my entire drawing. But check this out, the Lisa's real, true, killer feature. I can edit, copy this, go into my Who Killed Mr. Burns document, and I can frickin' paste it in here. Look at that! Right into my document. Can you believe this was 1983? All right, power on. Loading in tractor feed paper is always somewhat annoying. Set this to tractor feed. Yeah, maybe. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, you can kind of slide these things around a little bit. Oh, I think we got it. Oh yeah, we got it. Oh, that's so annoying. All right, now we press select. Now we can do file, print, All right, I may have gone a little crazy making art on the Lisa here. Just look at this beautiful Mac I made. Let's center this a bit. Let's print them out. Now, of course, the Lisa does have other business software on here for all of your important business needs. Lisa Project for project management, which I don't really know how to use. But NASA liked Lisa Project so much, they bought Lisa's just to run it. We can make some snazzy graphs in Lisa Graph. 
Lisa Calc is an incredibly advanced spreadsheet that works just about as well as modern Excel, including live updating formulas. This is all the more impressive when you realize that the first Windows version of Excel came out in 1987. Okay, now I am really excited to try this in the Lisa. It is an RS-232 Wi-Fi modem from the old net. It lets a serial terminal connect to your Wi-Fi and out to the greater internet. So I have a little serial adapter here to get this to DB25. And we're gonna plug this into serial port B, plug this thing into USB power, tear off a piece of Lisa terminal paper. Now we have to go into preferences, connect devices, serial B connector. We will set to serial cable. And the default for the Wi-Fi modem is 300 baud. Duplex will be half. And let's see if we're connected. Look at that. We're connected to the Wi-Fi modem. All right, let's change some settings here. Let's do a black background, line wrap off, word wrap off, and a block cursor. Oh yeah, that looks good. Now we can connect this to Wi-Fi. So I can do AT SSID equals, I think it's action Wi-Fi. Pass, and I'll enter my very secure password. And I can connect to our Wi-Fi. Look at that, I have an IP address 192.168.1.100. We are on the freaking internet. I'm gonna do bbs.retrocampus.com. Look at all this. Is anybody online? There's actually a frog find browser implemented in here. Now check this out. We're on the W3 consortium page. This is an HTML web page that we are browsing over serial on Lisa OS. Yeah, we can follow these links. Let's see, who's the staff of the W3C? <laughs> We're literally browsing the internet on Lisa OS. How freaking cool is that? And I am really freaking proud that Francesco was able to link FrogFind into his BBS to allow you to browse the internet this way. All right, let's try to connect to my favorite online game, the Death Wish Mud. Oh yeah, look at that. And when I was a kid, I was so into games like this which was really in the waning days of these text-based online MUDs. But I used to play these for freaking hours. The fact that I'm on here on Lisa OS, able to connect to a circle MUD. Oh, there's a lot of people on, look at that. Yeah, the fact that I can play a circle MUD here in Lisa OS online, this freaking blows my mind. But my absolute favorite part of Lisa OS is this. There is no shutdown option in any of these menus. If you want to turn off the Lisa, you simply press the power button and Lisa cleans everything up for you and turns itself off. This thing was seriously a computer from the future. It's amazing how modern the software on this thing feels for being 40 years old. I mean, with no experience, I was able to just doodle something like this. That's freaking impressive. But it actually brings me to a bit of a conundrum. I personally think the most interesting thing about the Apple Lisa is that it runs Lisa OS. Now there are some CPU accelerators out there of which I happen to have one, but this thing requires you to run Mac OS with Macworks on this thing. As far as I understand, the Lisa OS is basically hard-coded for the factory CPU speed. There's also some really interesting Unix stuff that can run on the Apple Lisa. Microsoft Xenix, for example. So I'm definitely going to try accelerating this Lisa, installing Mac OS on here and seeing how far we can push it. But at the end of the day, I think I'm always gonna go back to running Lisa OS on this thing. Let me know your thoughts on that down in the comments below. In any event, that'll do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more Lisa adventures, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. Thanks again to DuckDuckGo for sponsoring today's video.
And I just want to give a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and channel members. Thank you so much, each and every one of you, for supporting me and supporting this channel and all the weird stuff I do. I am so very grateful and I just could not do this without you.